Hello, I'm Chrissy Seaton and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to speak about the book of Isaiah and we're looking at chapter 53 verses 10, 11 and 12. Now the reason I am prompted to make this video on these particular three verses is because um, I had a recent comment uh, from someone asking me about these verses and asking me to make a comment or make a response to their question. Now, what happened was that was a video that was made in around August, um, August 14th, 2019. And the video was entitled, Noah Hides Beware Who You Learn From. Now, that... Uh, the person who contributed the comment, I discovered it today. It was only a comment that they had actually put up today. But when I approved it, uh, somehow or other, I lost it. Now, I don't know how. It just happened. And I thought it was a fair question that this person was asking. So that is why I'm making this video in, in the great hope that Whoever made that comment happens upon this video and hears the response. So without any further ado, I'm going to continue on and tell you that um, the commenter wrote the verses 10, 11 and 12 from Isaiah chapter 53 in their actual comment. And those verses were quoted from a King James version of their, obviously, their Bible. So I'm going to read those verses, but I'm, then I'm going to read the corresponding verse that comes from my um, Tanakh. Um, and um, it has got the corresponding uh, transliteration of Hebrew through into English and then with a commentary. So I'm going to begin that now. Now, the common person who made the comment from their King James Bible, chapter 53, verse 10, and I'm using a King James uh, Bible here that a dear friend of mine lends me at, um, so that I can respond to some questions and things. So uh, verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him, in that's in our italics, to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his, in italics, seed. He shall prolong his, in italics, days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his, in his hand. I'm now going to read you from um, my Tanakh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and I'm going to read verse 10 and then the commentary on verse 10. So it starts off verse 10. Hashem desired to oppress him and afflict him. If his soul would acknowledge guilt, he would see offspring and live long days and the desire of Hashem would succeed in his hand. The commentary on chapter 53, verse 10. That is Israel. God replies to the nations that Israel's suffering was a punishment for its own sins. And when the people realise this and repent, they will be redeemed and rewarded. Now I'm returning to the King James Version and I'm reading verse 11 of chapter 53. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Now I'm going to my Tanakh, Isaiah 53, verse 11. From his very own toil, he will see and be satisfied with his knowledge. 
my servant, the righteous one, will make multitudes righteous. It is their iniquities that he will carry. Full stop. Now, I'm going to the commentary on verse 11 of chapter 53 in the Tanakh. And it says, Israel will teach the nations of God's righteousness. End of comment. Now I'm going to return back to the King James Version and I'll now read verse 12 of chapter 53, Isaiah. These are all from Isaiah. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now I'll go to my Tanakh and I will read verse 12 of chapter 53, Isaiah. Therefore, I will assign him a portion from the multitudes and he will divide the mighty as spoils. In return for having poured out his soul for death and being counted among the wicked, for he bore the sin of the multitude and prayed for the wicked. And now the comment on Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. In exile, Jews prayed for the welfare of their hosts' nations. End of comment. So I do hope that that has um, that this somehow reaches that person who made that comment, and somehow or other I've lost it and can't respond personally to them. But I also I thought it was a very good question. And it certainly um, required a response. And that is why I've made this video. Now, the differences of how people interpret the King James Version as opposed to the actual correct um, Tanakh or um, the uh, Navim, that is called N-I-V-I-M, the Prophets, uh, will vary because of the corruption of the original texts and meanings and has happened in a number of cases and we see that quite plainly in the King James Version. So how it is written in the King James Version is not actually how it is translated and uh, authentically translated in the... Tanakh in, in the prophets, Navim, that's called. And of course, uh, the comments I've given you, they came straight out of um, my Tanakh in the, um, according to those verses I read, the comments um, I read also. And in the King James Version that I have been graciously loaned by a friend, there are actually no commentaries at all. So my purpose, first of all, was to answer this um, individual's question, which I lost the comment and couldn't respond. Um, I'm not sure what I did, but I apologise to whoever made the comment. And um, I also want to illustrate, again, be careful what you learn from as well, I think, because unless you go back to the original text and re read the authentic text, uh, you're, you're getting a um, how corrupted version. And, and I, know, I don't apologise for saying that. So if you're um, not a, a, a Jews and Noahides know this, that we would never uh, read from a corrupted version. But I understand that lots of Christians out there have what they call the Old and the New Testament. I can't uh, comment on your New Testament. It's not part of my faith. But if you want to study and read what you call the Old Testament, then I suggest you get hold of an authentic version that has a commentary. You can buy these through Jewish bookshops 
and uh, you can get the whole Tanakh, which includes the Torah, um, and it will give you quite, quite a number of uh, comments and to help you understand the actual authentic meaning or to clarify a certain thing, even a certain word. And you will know that you are getting uh, a non-corrupted version of the Jewish Bible, um, what you call the Old Testament. So I urge you to do that so you don't fall into confusion. And certainly, um, please um, uh, share this video with any of your Christian friends because if they're continuing to study and read from the King James Version, then they're being misled. And, and that's sad. It's not correct. Uh, it's, it's just not correct at all and it's not acceptable. So... Uh, I want to also shout out and say that there is a marvellous rabbi called Rabbi Tovia Singer who has done a tremendous series on the book of Isaiah, Isaiah a seven-part series, and I will place the link in the description box below and you can go and watch all those seven um, videos that Rabbi Singer gives on Isaiah and I assure you, you will never think about Isaiah the same way that you've thought about it prior to seeing those videos. It'll answer a lot of questions for you. Um, in the meantime, please subscribe to my channel. Please share this video because I'm hoping the original commenter will finally get to see this answer. And um, also, please feel free to leave a comment. I always like to read your comments and help in any way. And in the meantime, until my next video, I want you to take good care of yourself and God bless.